Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today I'm going to tell you about the world's fastest wheel and why it rides like a hovercraft, the Big Old Master. So, let me tell you more about it. First of all, big thanks to my e-wheel for providing this wheel for testing purposes. If you want to get a wheel like this or any other wheel in Europe, check my links below. Use the coupon code the wrong way for additional 5% off. I also do receive a kickback from these orders, so you know what's what. Anyways, let's get on with it. I got the Bigode Master three months ago, and since that time I've put around 1500 kilometers on the clock. So based on all of my experiences, and there were a lot with those wheels, we will review it based on six categories. That is safety, durability, ride, performance, features, and lastly, a conclusion. I'll try to condense the information as good as possible, and if you have any open questions after this review, check out the playlist below with more videos about the Bigode Master. And first up, let's talk about safety, because this is the highest priority. And of course, Bigot wheels aren't known for their best safety and best durability. And did anything change in the Bigot Master? Well, sort of. There's some new tech in the batteries and a different layout, but let the voiceover tell you more about that. And let's start with the battery technology. And here I would say out of all of the EUC brands, Bigode lags behind the most. The battery management system doesn't communicate with the motherboard, nor can you connect to it via Bluetooth or anything else. It's a big bummer because if something's wrong, the only way to find out, maybe, is that the wheel doesn't charge to 100%. This is highly dangerous and I really wonder why they still don't have that since it's a quite easy and cheap fix. The charge ports are still hot and now having 134 volts peak voltage this doesn't make it any better. So if water gets in there or I don't know some metal parts, it will get sparks and possibly blow a fuse or damage the battery. The battery layout did change for the better in the newest batch of the Bigode Master. So instead of having four packs in series and no redundancy, you have two parallel packs that peak out the incredible 134 volt peak voltage. There are some safety features added to the battery pack, like a temperature sensor and a buzzer, which hopefully works, and some fuses are there as well, as well as a charging protection. But in general, in terms of battery safety, Bigode is still the worst among the EUCs. While you can still ride the Bigode Master pretty chill and not stress it too much, I think that this wheel is designed for performance riders. And is there all of the safety for those performance riders? Hmm. The main way to tell if something's wrong with the EUC or you're pushing it too much are beeps. And those happen at a certain speed and battery level at, you know, going top speed. but not really when trying to accelerate. So whilst on a King Song S22 you might accelerate and it will beep and you'll notice or 
tilt the foot blades that you're doing too much on the master, it will do it when it happens or not at all. I never reach too high temperatures on the master, so that's really good, but I don't really know if the temperature alarms work in that case. Low battery alarms do work well. So here it's really up to the rider not to push too much on the EUC, and the EUC isn't designed in a foolproof way to prevent you from overpowering or overstressing it. You're gonna help yourself a bit with a app that will tell you or tilt the foot plates back at certain speeds or certain amps uh, on the controller, but I wish it would be built in, baked in, like on King Song or in Motion Wheels. It's really great that the Bigode Master comes with different battery options, and if you're a high performance rider, definitely go for either the Samsungs or the Mollis Hells because they have smaller inner resistance and deliver more performance and have more headroom. However, the battery is still not that big for riding always at the top end, and I still feel a lot more comfortable on the Veteran Sherman or Veteran Sherman Max pushing, especially at those higher speeds. All of those things led to a couple of cutoffs on uh, the Big Oat Master and a couple almost cutoffs where the pedals dip. Uh, Some are also because of just faulty soldering on the battery packs. So, as said, it's a laboratory. It might be great, but it might be also not. And the calmer you will ride on the wheel, the safer you will be. Oh yeah, and of course there is no uh, waterproof rating. But the water resistance is not terrible per se, with the biggest weak points being the screw holes around the battery pack covers where water can get in. It's a you know bummer, but happily the battery is protected with shrink wrap, which is absolutely phenomenal. And in terms of other places, there is a lack of um, seals or silicone. However, you shouldn't have any problems with bearings. I wouldn't comfortably ride this wheel in rain unless I would waterproof it. And even then, it's always a bit more stressful than, for example, on the Veteran Sherman. When it comes to durability, I have to say that Bigode really stepped up their game a lot. Like, there is so much metal here. And we have this pillar, although the new one does look a lot smaller than this one. But there is a metal construction, a lot of modularity, and everything seems kind of sturdy and nice. Well, there's some exceptions to that, being the battery casing, which is very flimsy, and some other small details. Like the plastic taillight assembly that will bend or break upon a medium speed crash. High voltage wiring, which is too exposed for my taste and the foam outside parts just being held in place by double-sided tape. But in general, it's really a big step up from before, and in my opinion, this suspension mechanism and technology works the best out of all, everything that I've tried till now. It's still pretty sturdy and after, as I said, 1500 kilometers works well. There aren't like any major clunks or other problems. I do like the bumper foam design outside, which prevents it from scratching or breaking on smaller falls. And if you want to check out the master from the inside more thoroughly, check out my teardown. The ride of the Bigode master is nothing short of insane and what i mean by that is especially the suspension now it might be not what you think because usually suspension on small electric vehicles is tight it's hard but here it's all destined for comfort even on any surface like for example this one i can go to totally straight and it's basically like i said initially like a hovercraft I might be wrong, but as far as I've been testing electric vehicles, I think that this might just be the most comfortable way of transportation, period. For sportier riding, it might be a bit too soft. It will lack a bit of feedback. And on jumps, it might just bottom out because of the different geometry that Bigode used here. But we're both riding on Bigode Masters now, Surge as well. We're on a terrible road. It's absolutely hideous. Any other wheel, maybe except for the X20S, I'll be dying here. But on the Master, I can ride on one leg. I can sit down. Yeah, search can record the video. It's so seamless and satisfying, it's actually mind-blowing. 
But that doesn't mean that the master has a perfect ride and also not right from the get-go. As you can see, I have a different tire. It's a Michelin City Pro 809014. If you want to check out the ride on the stock tire, feel free to watch the ride video link below. But yeah, the stock tire just didn't totally work for me. With the street tire, I can control the wheel a lot better, but it still takes a lot, a lot of getting used to. It compresses when you turn sharply, it compresses when you accelerate or brake. The very high foot plates are great for off-roading and for not clipping your pedals, but it's definitely more difficult to accelerate, brake on this wheel, keep your balance and step on and off from it. I definitely miss the customizability of the S22 with the different pedal height and variable suspension geometry. As it was in this master version, even at 300 PSI, it was fairly easy to bottom out the shock. There is no pedal dipping pretty much when accelerating, there is pedal dipping in longer turns. In general, I would say that this is like a, you know, TGV train that occasionally you can do off-road in and super steep inclines. It's definitely not as playful and, and fun as the Bigode Hero, but for cruising anywhere, getting from point A to B, it's rather great. When it comes to performance, there is no doubt that this is currently the world's quickest, world's fastest EUC. And with the 100... I hate the loud vehicles. There is no doubt that this is the world's fastest, world's quickest EUC because while there might be some EUCs that have a slightly higher top speed like the Monster Pro and at least one that we have sort of verified, this has both the most torque and pretty much the same speed as the uh, Bigode Monster Pro, topping out at around 85 or even more, 90 kilometers an hour. But what really fascinates and excites me is that here we also have tons and tons and tons of torque. When doing the acceleration test, however, I didn't feel comfortable enough to push this wheel really hard because I saw those cutouts on this wheel. However, it's still a lot faster than the Kingsong S22 and if you really lean hard into it, yes, it will be super quick, especially on the high discharge battery packs. In terms of top speed, it doesn't beep up until 84 kilometers an hour, according to the speedometer of the wheel. Um, so yeah, I was cruising so fast comfortably, especially because of the suspension. The suspension really is a game changer here and makes a huge difference in ride comfort and ride safety. The braking is also really decent, but I couldn't get it any lower because it's difficult to mount custom pads onto the master and the stock ones just didn't cut it that well for hard brakes. The torque is crazy. You basically get even more than the 100 volt HT wheels by Bigode and still can rip as fast as the high speed wheels by Bigode. It's really a huge benefit, this 134 volt system. I won't show you my usual inclines because this thing is just ripping through them. This is a 45 degree incline, actually 45 degrees and just two wheels that I've tried I didn't make it up there, the MSPHT and the EXNHT. And after a couple failed attempts because I slipped out or over leaned it just a tad, I could get up there. And naturally, I had to try once again with no hands. This is absolutely crazy, and this means that if you're off-roading, you will always pretty much have enough torque, and the suspension helps a lot to keep the grip, keep the wheel always on the ground. Remember though that this sort of use makes the lifespan of such a UC a lot shorter. So usually, I was just riding pretty chill. When it comes to the range of this thing, I was also pretty impressed because I could go 97 kilometers via darkness bot or 90 kilometers via GPS. A lot, 
really a lot more than on the S22 and with higher speeds. It's a good result and then charging is also rather quick at around 5-6 to six hours for a full charge. Usually it was charging quicker than I expected. And you can connect also a second charger for around 3 hours, so that's pretty okay. I mean, could be quicker, but it's okay. When it comes to features, the Bigode Master has pretty much everything that you would want from a EOC, maybe except for speakers. We have a nice display in the front, which is quite readable. We have a trolley handle, which is at a good height, but I think it's too flimsy to use it as a sort of a lift handle. We have lights which are, let's be honest, a bit too weak, but you can adjust them. The tail light is non-existent, that's why I have the Shredlights SLFX. We even have stock pads, that might be just the first wheel that I was riding throughout the whole review um, with the stock pads. I tried other pads, but these work pretty well because of the hole here for the seated riding. I just added some Grizzler pads here on the back to make the braking better. This is definitely not enough. We have spiked pedals, a kickstand which to be honest, isn't the best. It's pretty easy to tip it over. And a lift button, so you can lift it easier. Another great feature is the easier tire change that doesn't require you to disconnect the phase wires from the motherboard. And as we were just discussing with Serge, who's behind the camera, this is pretty much the most well-rounded wheel and a wheel with most options pretty much out of the box because if you buy a Sherman you need to buy pads, you need to buy foot plates, a mud guard, seats and all of those things here maybe except for those pads here which I think are quite necessary are already there. The seat is great and I think even more comfortable than the Sherman. The foot plates are amazing, adjustable and they have spikes. The mud guard well needs some improvements and the kickstand well still a bit flimsy and not maybe as great as it could be, it's still there. So let's conclude it all. Should you buy a Big Ode Master? And while the ride is amazing, the performance is mind-blowing. And in many cases I can do things on the Big Ode Master and have so many possibilities. Well, in other cases I, have, I would have to choose different wheels for different tasks. There's one problem. Its name is Big Ode. And if you don't know Bigode, Bigode is known for their customer treatment, never admitting any bad refires or failures, and changing stuff in the wheel that makes them e either worse or break, or <sighs> it's just a company that in my eyes is a laboratory and we are its testing subjects. So while I am thrilled to write this thing and it's rather great and even for those 1000 what 400 kilometers that I've done on it there isn't like many loose parts on it and it seems like quite sturdy like there are some clongs but it's not terrible for sure I'm still a bit worried about the battery safety about the longevity and if when you buy a wheel from Big Oat, if they didn't change something up or mix something up to make it worse or better so in the end, it's your choice. It's a lot of money and we are sadly at the brink of EUCs, the early adopters of the technology. So if you know performance and all of those things that I mentioned are something for you and you are aware of the issues and possible dangers that might happen with this wheel, then yes. But if you're just a newbie and you want to have something bulletproof, just get a bicycle. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to see more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.